Hi there, so this is a quick video on how to darn in the ends once you've finished um, a piece of work. This works really for knitting or crochet as well. So I've already got a finished hat here. I'm just going to show you using some contrast coloured yarn um, how you would darn in the ends um, just as an extra piece so that I can take it out again. So first of all, you need a darning needle, which is a slightly bigger one than a normal sewing needle so that it's big enough to get um, wool through it. Um, you can get ones that are slightly blunt at the end or sharp at the end, it's into, up to you. With a sharp one, you do risk piercing the um, through the ply of the yarn, but I personally prefer a sharper one, but you know, it's personal preference. So the first thing to note is that you need to do all the darning in on the inside or the wrong side of the piece, which whatever it is you're doing, um, just because you don't want to have it on the outside um, because it, it shouldn't show up, but just in case it does, it's better to all be on the inside. So if you do have any tails hanging through the outside, you need to thread them through to the back um, and to the inside. So I'm just going to show you this. There's no sort of right or wrong, in my opinion, of how to do this, but I'll show you how I do it. You need to make sure that when you change colour or when you start a piece that you leave a tail long enough to darn in. So I would say at least that long. Um, some people cut them very short and it makes it really difficult to darn in afterwards. So I don't do that. So what I do is, let's imagine that we've got a, a piece of a tail here that needs darning in. Okay, and I've threaded it on. So what I do... Actually, let's start that again. Let's just go through one little bit of it. So there it is. What I do is I work sort of on the inside of the stitches on the inside, on the row. And I put my needle through maybe three stitches or something like that, making sure that it's not going through to the other side, that you're just working through like the top of the stitch there. And I pull through. And I kind of go back and forth about three times. So I've done that once then. Now when you go back, don't go through the exact same hole again because then you're just going to pull the, the tail out. So you need to sort of adjust it slightly. So that's one, two. And then I go back for three. I feel that three secures them enough. And then you would trim it really. So if you trim there and there obviously you would only have one end of the tail normally it's just because i'm adding a piece on here uh, if you trim each side there you shouldn't be able to see make sure if you've got a color change as well that you work the tail into the same piece of color if you can if it's possible because that just means um it will hide any uh tail end that, that you know that you can see if you work through it but and then, for example, when, you, when you've done, if you're doing a hat, hat with ribbing, instead of going that way, I followed, I went along the back of the, um, like up there, the back of the rib there. And that kind of hides the tail in there. But I, I find personally that three back and forths is enough to secure it and then trim it so that it's in, invisible. I hope that helps.